everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, we talk about all things homesteading, homemaking, and just our journey to a slower, more simple life. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my process for canning some tomato products. What I'm going to be making today is just going to be some canned diced tomatoes and some tomato paste. So, first things first, we need to get tomatoes. I already have quite a few that I've done the first process with and then froze, but I have more now that have come into being ripened, and this is definitely not the end either. I still have green tomatoes ripening on my table and some Roma tomatoes that are still in the garden because we have not had a freeze yet, surprisingly, but I'm going to leave those on until I have to get them. So this is going to be a process I'm going to be doing multiple times. It's definitely easier to just do it all in one big batch, but you just roll with whatever you have to do. <laughs> so the first part of this process is to prepare the tomatoes for whatever you're going to do with them. I'm going to start with coring our tomatoes, so getting the middle part out, and that is also when I will cut off any bad parts. You can definitely process tomatoes that have something like bug damage, for example, you just want to cut it off and not actually use it. But the rest of the tomato, if it is all good, you can use that. So the least amount of waste as possible. So after coring and taking care of those bits, then we're gonna blanch the tomatoes. If you don't know what blanching is, it is basically just a process that you boil. I will get this water in this pot here up to a boil, put my tomatoes in for roughly a minute, Bigger tomatoes will take longer, smaller tomatoes take less time, but about a minute on average. After that point, I will scoop out the tomatoes from the boiling water and place them, dunk them right into some cold water. This process makes it so we can take the peels off of the tomatoes. This is just a good first step for pretty much any tomato recipe I can think of because they all usually don't have the peel on. There are things like mills that you can run tomato through and they, I believe they take off the peel and the seeds they take out, but I don't have that kind of machine. So I'm just gonna go with a good old fashioned blanching of the tomatoes. It's really not a hard process at all. I will show you how I do it. And that first starts with putting my stove on on high heat to get this water to a boil. And while that's getting to a boil, I'm going to get my knife out and start coring these tomatoes. Now that it's getting to a pretty good boil, I'm going to go ahead and start putting tomatoes in. I'm going to do smaller ones first just because they are a similar, closer to being similar on how long it will take. Do be careful of it splashing back at you. I'm doing it very kind of sporadically. You could do that much nicer by uh, lowering it with a tool. And I'm going to leave those ones in there for about a minute. So it's been about a minute, and so I'm going to take something like this that has holes to let the water out, take them out, and put them directly into a bowl of cold water. Just like so. And there, that's the first round that was boiled. Now I'm going to put the rest of the tomatoes in the hot water to boil while I start peeling these ones. Those ones are gonna take a little bit longer because of how big they are, but I will show you how easy this is now. Now that it has been boiled and transferred to the cold water, the skin should come off very easily. Depending on the type of tomato, it will be more difficult, such as this is a mushroom basket tomato that has a lot of ridges, so this one will be harder for me to get everything off in like a clean. That's pretty good though. 
in a one clean swoop, but that was not too bad. But depending on what tomatoes you are processing, it could be more or less difficult. And once it's all peeled, I have a separate bowl ready to go ahead and place it in. And some people may think that you can only really do this with aroma variety of tomato, and that is not true at all. Those are a excellent uh, paste tomato for things like this. They're kind of uh, been designed for uh, processing, but that definitely doesn't mean that that's the only ones you can do this with. I always do it with any tomatoes that I have left at the end of the season that just can't get eaten by me just eating them because I don't let anything go to waste in that regard. And some may choose to remove seeds during this process as well. I don't mind the seeds at all for anything. I enjoy them. So I don't remove seeds, but that is definitely an option. And if you overprocess them a little bit, they might just kind of fall apart as you're getting the skin off. That is not a big deal. Just do what you can and be prepared for you to deal with kind of a lot of goo. But that's okay because I can transfer it right over. It can be difficult to get the timing just right so that it makes it a smooth skin removal, but not difficult for it to not fall apart. See, in that circumstance, it really just goo, goo came right out, <laughs> but that's fine. And I left the skins in here. I'm just going to kind of grab what I can and put them in the bowl that I had previously for our cores, just to kind of clean this bowl out a little bit. I'm going to be taking that out to the compost. And now we're ready for round two. Here we go. Let's see how these ones are going to do. They're not bad at all. Whew, hot, hot, hot. And just so you do know, if you had to cut quite a bit off of a tomato to get bad spots off, don't be alarmed when it kind of really falls apart from each other into big sections. That is completely likely to happen. You can still peel those little bits and just salvage what is left in it. Such as this, for example, just a little bit. Peel off the skin that you can. And there we go. Here's another one that really fell apart in the process. But still got all that. So this is what we have for cored and peeled tomatoes. My plan with those tomatoes that we just blanched, cored, and did all that together is to make diced tomatoes. And then I have a couple bags of tomatoes that I already blanched and cored, processed, and I froze them until I was ready to can them. And with this, I'm planning to make tomato paste. So that will be what we do next. So at this point now, I got out my canner, and because I have the Presto Digital one, it is different than if you had a different water bath canner. We are going to be water bath canning this. And so I have it on my boiling water setting, and I set it up to be ready to can for 35 minutes. And the jars are currently in here preheating. So now what I'm going to do is get those tomatoes that I took care of and I'm gonna be dicing them up into half inch to inch kind of blocks. And then I'm gonna put it in a pot on the stove top and then we'll do some more after that. I also have those tomatoes that were frozen in this pot and they are just cooking down. This is gonna be a very long process because for tomato paste, you're essentially trying to get all of the water out of it. So it's gonna be a very little amount, even with all those uh, tomatoes, it seems like, in those bags, but it's gonna turn out to be a pretty small amount of tomato paste, which is fine. I knew that going in. So here we have our tomatoes that we did. 
and I'm just going to start cutting those up. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. You just want to keep it between about a half inch to a inch. Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over into a pot. And we'll go ahead and put this on the stove top. So with this, we're going to heat it over high heat for about five minutes or just until we know for sure that it is thoroughly nice and warm all the way through because we are going to be hot packing this. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this heat up and we will get back to it when the jars are ready. So now we are going to can up our diced tomatoes. Now you might think that tomatoes would be acidic enough to water bath can, but the truth is not all tomatoes are created equal. And so you do have to add something to bring that acidity up when you are water bath canning tomatoes. For these pint jars for the diced tomato recipe, you just need a tablespoon of lemon juice, or if for some reason you don't have bottled lemon juice but do have citric acid, for pint jars you need a fourth of a teaspoon of citric acid and just add that in the bottom of each jar before adding your tomatoes. If you're doing quarts, you're going to want either two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice or a half teaspoon of citric acid. And we'll just let these sit overnight. So considering how long it does take to make the paste, I think I will just insert a clip here when it is done. So this tomato paste is what I would call being kind of in the sauce stage. A lot of water has evaporated out of it, but not enough to call it paste. For it to be paste, it really needs to have all where you can see all of that water pretty much out. So we're going to keep going, keeping it over the low heat and making sure to stir regularly so as to not to burn any on the bottom of the pan. And like I said, this time I am just going to go ahead and probably throw that either in the freezer or maybe even the fridge because I might use it quickly just because of the small amount. But I still think it was worth doing because that is a thing of tomato paste or more. I'll have to see how much I have. But that is tomato paste that I otherwise would have to go buy in the store, which I would because I use it. And it is me practicing my skill of creating it. So you can never go wrong when you are learning. I will have more tomatoes coming in before the end of the canning season, but I wanted to get this one out because I know tomatoes are a favorite not just with me, but amongst lots of people. And so I do want to share any knowledge that I may have that could be useful for anybody else. So I am pretty happy with what we did here today. I hope that did help you to, if you're maybe new to this, learn a little bit of a new skill in how to preserve tomatoes. I do hope you remember that even if you don't have a big tomato harvest, you can still preserve what you do have and or just go get tomatoes, even if it's not even from a farmer's market, but from the grocery store. Just obtain some tomatoes and practice these preserving methods yourself. It's such a great thing to know and it is wonderful to practice before you have fields and fields of tomatoes that you have to preserve up than to wait till you do and not know how to do it very well. If you like this video and do want to see more, please consider subscribing so that we can build this community of like-minded folks. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye!